Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And when she finishes, then there'll be a motion from the floor to say, um, we make the motion that there'll be a roll call vote based upon X number of states being submitted. Guess what we're going to say? They're going to say the two or three people. Now, one or two things are going to happen. They're going to just totally ignore that and go by affirmation, by a, by a voice vote. But if we get through that hurdle, that they actually recognize. And so what I'll tell you is... They're just going to be screaming on the floor with no mic. No, no, no. The, the, the people who are going to get up, they're going to get up to the mics. There We have three individuals at three strategic locations who have the clout to get to the microphone and say, Madam Chair... We move, uh, we make this motion, we do whatever, I don't know the exact motion, I don't know what it is. And then uh, she'll say, and then somebody will have to second it, and when they second it, they've got it. Um, and then once she seconds it, then there'll be an actual roll call vote. Now, we're not short of water, so this has never been done before, so the question becomes, when it says roll call, what does that mean? We think what will happen is that the individual delegation chairs will then hold their individual delegations and come up with the votes. When they come in the votes, then they'll do a roll call and say the state of California says 500 yay, whatever the numbers are, you know, whatever. Uh, we feel very confident that if we actually get to a roll call vote, we will win. Then what happens after that, my understanding is that we will revert, revert back to the 2012 rules until the rules committee goes and drafts new rules. And what we're hoping is that when they go back to draft new rules, that we'll be able to get us and other stakeholders be able to get some of this, these draconian um, rules overturned so the delegates can actually vote and represent their conscience or whatever you want to say. So, so that, you know, it's a multi-step process. The first hurdle was getting the signatures. We crushed through that. And now we just, you know, we're at the mercy of what the, um, uh, of what the chair is going to do. But listen, everything they do, they try to shut down this movement, they try to shut down the people, they try to shut down the delegates, um, but we have shown that we are going to keep fighting and keep fighting and keep fighting, so we'll see what happens. Okay. For the, for the agreement here, in past conventions, have delegates been able to vote their conscience? Yes, and every, you know, only in 1976 was the only election in which the delegates could not vote their conscience. That was during the Ford-Reagan, where Gerald Ford wanted to ensure that he got the nomination. But what's been lost in all this, you know, there's nothing to get too wonky, but there are two sets of rules. There are the RNC rules and there's the convention rules. And unless the, unless the convention rules actually bind the delegates, they're unbound. So only once since the convention system started have the delegates been bound, and that was in 1976. So the, uh, so the rules committee had to take the proactive step of binding the delegates, which, which is interesting considering they've been saying the delegates have been bound, they've been bound. So if the delegates have been bound, why do they have to vote to bind them? So the delegates were free to vote their conscience until the rules committee specifically voted to bind them. So when in past years when they voted for the nominee on the floor, which is usually so far, how does that go? Do they do it by do actually people raise their hands or the chairs of the states count their delegation well, or how does it go? What you what is supposed to happen and what usually happens, and what's supposed to happen is that every delegation chair at some point, whether it's at their hotel or wherever they do they, they poll the delegation to see how they want to vote. Okay, that's what's supposed to happen. You know, and every state's a little different. Some will just say, hey, are there any objections? Like, you know, casually, whatever. But what is supposed to happen is that uh, every delegation was supposed to, every delegate supposed to be given a ballot. They're supposed to, it's supposed to be a secret ballot. They're supposed to be able to vote for whom they want. And then the delegation chair gets it, ties it all in, you know, adds up the votes, and then reports it with the floor. That is what's supposed to happen. But now, since they voted to bind the delegates, they, can't, they, don't, they don't even have that option anymore. Let me ask you, you had some preliminary setbacks. It was widely reported, some preliminary stuff. What was that about? Well, I mean, well, I mean, the preliminary setback was that, you know, that, well, we came into this knowing that the delegates were, were free to vote their conscience. Um, but what we've seen, you know, one of, the first, one of the first things that happened was that there was a lawsuit filed in Virginia to unbind the delegates. You know, there, there are state laws and there's RNC laws. It gets very complicated. In 20 states, state law said that the delegates were bound to a specific candidate. So that's, the U.S. Supreme Court has ruled that states cannot regulate a private political association. Uh, so we went into court with Bo Perel um, and we struck that law down. So once that happened, then basically in the states where delegates were bound because of state law was basically shut down. Now the interesting thing there is that when the case was filed in Virginia, uh, uh, the Trump campaign intervened in the case. 
Okay, they intervened, and what they wanted to do is they said, no, the states have the right to bind the delegates. And actually, they sent their own parliamentarian down there at $450 an hour to be their, their expert witness. So you in the Virginia case, uh, there are numerous examples where the Trump campaign and the RNC have tried to um, force delegates to sign pledges to vote for Donald Trump. And then you look at what happened at the Rules Committee, where they actually voted to bind the delegates, which as I said, they keep saying, they keep telling delegates, you're bound, you're bound, so why didn't they vote to bind them? Now, once again, this, is, this has become much bigger than Donald Trump. This is where, what the draconian steps that the RNC has taken to take away the power from the delegates is why there were able, we, were, we were able, working with other stakeholders, to get enough signatures to, to force a, a roll call vote. So I think it's an important thing so to remember. Now 11 states, I'm sorry to say. We have 11 states. And are you confident that there will be a vote that you delivered it to the party? Well, listen, we follow the rules and procedures. Uh, it's up to them about whether they want to follow the rules. Is Maryland one of the 11 states? No. no, I don't think Maryland was one of them. Well, yeah, we, it took us a while to, well, I wasn't down on the floor when it actually happened. There was a lot of press there to do it. Yeah, we tried to track down the uh, convention secretary. She was hiding for a long period of time. <laughs> My understanding is she finally uh, came out and took the signatures. No, 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 she didn't. no a floor who, captain took them to yeah, her. Who, yeah. four, oh, what, a floor captain took, took the signatures to her. But I'm glad that you have it on video. That, so, you know, that so, what does, so what does it mean if there isn't a vote after you deliver the signatures? Well, there's another step there. Okay, we submit the signatures. They say we have enough states. And then when they actually get to the roll call, uh, they, there's a motion that has to actually take place to say we make a motion for a roll call vote based upon submitting some What's your states. threshold for the state states? states? To what? To be able to do that to force Well, we had to get uh, the uh, majority of delegates in seven states, and we got 11 states. Now, what about what what do 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 now if there's going to be a roll call, where do you guys actively whipping to try to win it? Like, do you have an operation to try yes. to well, I mean, you know, the, the, we don't have to whip a whole lot, to be honest with you, because see, people are so angry about what's going on. You know, this is one of those issues where it's not just, you know, uh, pro-Trumpers. I mean, there, there are individuals who are Trump supporters who are outraged at what the RNC did. So this is one of those things that we really don't have to whip a whole lot for, but we will, to ensure that um, that the rules package gets voted down and they actually try to draft rules that, that respect uh, the authority of the delegates. So they have to rewrite a new rule for it? Well, as I said, we're in uncharted waters. I mean, in theory, it goes back to the 2012 rules, and those rules, they can do one of two things from what I understand, is that they can let those rules govern the convention throughout, or they can actually go back and rewrite the rules. Do you, do you have these two or three signatures? Of course, every single day. I mean, they, everything they're doing is designed to keep us from submitting these signatures. Um, you know, so, listen, the, the amount of energy that went into over the last 24 hours to get these signatures, as you all know, these delegates were just coming into town late last night and this morning. So the amount of energy there is for this is, is amazing that all these delegates can come together so quickly and submit these signatures. Why did the talks with the RNC break down? I'm sorry? Why exactly did talks with the RNC break down last night? You have to talk to somebody else about that. Dane, so you're going to Yes, I'm Dane Waters. Dane, you're going to have these people, these strategically placed people that have access to microphones. What happens if, like, what do you think the RNC will do? Will they listen to those people at the microphones? Or? Well, I mean, they could, they, you know, they could choose just to ignore them. I mean, they, you know, somebody says I have to make an objection. I mean, that's you know, what they'll say. I have to make an objection. Yeah, they have to stand up and say, no, no, they don't make an objection. What they do, they stand up and say, I want to make a motion um, that there be a roll call vote based upon submitting, you know, the majority of delegates from 11 states. That's well, what, what time is that going to happen? Your guess is as good as mine, right? So, I just want to understand: were the petitions delivered to the secretary? I didn't hear exactly. I was not there, but somebody said, "Yeah, it, I mean, we delivered them. It was delivered to uh, a representative of the convention secretary, from what I understand." But they actually have the signatures, and they took uh, possession of those signatures. Guys, should you talk about your behind you? On this. Well, I mean, well, I mean, it, 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 it's a majority of delegates in, in, in 11 states. I mean, every state's different sizes. Or I, can't, I don't know the total number. To be honest. Talking about maybe say a thousand, over a thousand, perhaps. Well, no, I don't, I don't, you know, I don't, I really can't sit here and tell you how many signatures because literally we were finishing putting all this together at 11:45 as we were walking over here. So. But you spent the weekend whipping votes for the roll call, right? I mean, that's what you told me before. Well, yeah. Well, we. So we, how many of those people do you think you had? You know, all I know is that you know this morning when the delegations actually met for the very first time, that's when the most of these signatures were gathered. 
Uh, and I can tell you this has been a minute by minute thing. And you know, I can't sit here and tell you how many signatures. All I know is that we got the majority of signatures in 11 states. Over the weekend, were you whipping for a minority reporter? No. I mean, for the roll call. For the roll call. Well, I mean, once, once, you know, after Thursday night when they when the rules came out, uh, we were committed, along with many other stakeholders, that the only avenue that we had for us is to is to strike down the rules and start all over. Now, you know, starting, I don't know, it was Thursday, it was Friday, it was today, Monday. Um, so, I mean, it took a couple of days to figure out exactly what the next mechanism were. It's not like the RNC is out there saying, hey, this is what you do next, okay? So, so it took a couple of days to figure out exactly what the next steps were, uh, then the logistics of trying to figure out how to actually, you know, get the signatures. Uh, we reached out, just so you know, to the RNC, asking them to, you know, what forms we should use and all that kind of stuff. We never got a response from them. Um, so there's a whole host of technicalities there, and it was uncharted waters, and I can assure you the RNC was not helpful in any shape, form, or fashion <laughs> in helping us figure out how to get these submitted. So. You, you don't know if the same rules committee would have to approve the rules report again, right? Because it's stock for the RNC. You know, uh, well, I don't know. Okay. Maybe Is there a process saying. for them to confirm that these are valid signatures? There's no, there's no process written in there. I mean, so we just have to wait and see what they do. Can I get your ID? Huh? Your name, your name. Dane Waters. Thank Dane you. Waters, uh, Florida. Are you a delegate or no? No, I'm not a delegate. This is the first convention in several that I'm not a delegate. So. Um, anyway, what other questions? So how did you get access to the floor here? Oh, I'm, a, I'm, the party here? I'm a guest. Yes, I'm your guest, man. I'm your, no. no, I mean, you know, we have copies of all the petitions uh, that people can sign, I mean, look at. Uh, listen, I, I fully expect that the RNC will do everything they're in power to stop a roll call vote. And what's interesting about all this, you know, every single step of the way, they made it very difficult, not just for our group, for other groups, uh, for the delegates to exercise their authority. And it goes back to, I mean, Donald Trump is the, is the only horse in the race, so it's very interesting how every single thing they're doing is to ensure that the delegates cannot vote their conscience. But, but once again, this is more than Donald Trump. This is more than about Donald Trump. This is the power grab by the RNC to ensure that the delegates, who are the true authority of the party, don't have the opportunity to, to express you know, their true feelings about that candidate. would be the binding president precedent for all conventions going forward. Is that what you believe? Well, yeah. I mean, well, the, well what will happen is that the you know the you know the convention rules are set for every convention. Right. Um, but with, with, once again, I mean, but they're setting a precedent here. This, this is the first time since 1976 they voted. People, people voted. Follow the will of the people. The will if this doesn't the people. work, what's next? You know, here's the thing about the will of the people. You know, 54% of the people voted against Donald Trump. Donald Trump only received 9% of all the registered voters in this country. And even when Donald Trump, you know, when they when they poll um, Republicans now, 52% of the, of, the, of the Republicans don't want him. But once again, this is about if, if, if the will of the people is for Donald Trump, then the delegates should have be freely allowed to vote um, should be freely allowed to vote their conscience for Donald Trump. If Donald Trump truly has the support he says he has, then let the delegates vote their conscience. If they want to unify the party, let the delegates vote their conscience. I mean, come out of here with a unified candidate, a unified party, and the only way to do that is for the delegates to be able to vote their conscience. What other candidate is there? Well, you know, to me, it doesn't even really matter if there is another candidate. What, what matters is that the delegates can freely choose Donald Trump. If the delegates said, hey, Donald Trump, you're the person that I want to be the nominee of this party. If somebody else stepped forward, great. If they don't, then so be it. Which is interesting because he is the only candidate. So if he's the only candidate, then why are they so concerned about the delegates voting in their conscience? What about rumors you have to vote or what's in the zone petition? I don't know. I have no idea what else is going on out there. Do you worry that this kind of backlash to him from within the party is going to damage him too much for the general election? No, I think, listen, there's, there's nothing that we can do to to divide the party more than Donald Trump has. I mean, what we're doing is try to unify the party. I mean, um, yeah, I, I'd, I'd love to sit here and say that everything we're doing is dividing the party, uh, but this is all about unifying the party and trying to get the delegates you know, to vote their conscience and ensure that it's a unified party and a unified candidate to get uh, out of here. Historically, is there any precedent for anything like this? No. Not that I know of, no. I mean, this Except is... 76. Well, since 1976, as far as the binding of the delegates, as far as pushing for submitting signatures for a roll call vote, yeah, I don't know the last time that this happened. Can you say what the, the petitions essentially say? I can actually show you what they say. It says basically, I mean, it's a very simple, it's a very simple language here. That's not it. Are you yelling at or... No, I'm, I'm a guest, I'm not a delegate. 
It says, um, pursuant to Rule 39 of the Republican Party, we, the undersigned delegates to the 2016 Republican National Convention, hear my demand a roll call vote on the following items. On the report of the Convention Committee on Rules and Order of Business, on all minority reports and amendments to the report of the Convention Committee on Rules and Orders of Business. This is specific to the Rules Committee and the rules. Um, so it's all about the rules. There's nothing else about anything associated with, with, the, uh, with the Convention. So we are, we are scanning these to put them online, and we'll let you guys know how you can actually get a copy of all the petitions uh, and what it says. Listen, we had, there were enough delegates who were interested uh, in uh, uh, stopping Donald Trump from being the nominee. So what they did, I mean, that universe has grown only because it's more than Donald Trump now. It's about, um, you know, an affront to the delegates, and, and it's, a, it's a power grab. So I firmly believe that if, um, if there's no intimidation, if the delegates are freely able to vote their conscience, that the rules package will be voted down. Trump has been projecting that he won all these races and got, like we just heard from the heckler, to all the people. You read the you read the results differently, don't you? No, I mean, listen, the RNC is a private association. Okay, the delegates are the only authority who can nominate and nominate anybody for, for office. The delegates' responsibility is to listen to how the, the voters voted, but also to look at whether or not an individual represents the values of the party, and also whether the individual is electable in November. That is the, uh, it's like a three-legged stool. That is the responsibility of the delegates. So how the, uh, the voters cast their ballots is very important, but the delegates also have to take into consideration all the other issues associated with putting forward... But you have a counter-narrative that he's overstating how successful he was. He well, just ticked off a list of... Well, I mean, the bottom line is if he truly has the support he says, then he shouldn't be afraid of the delegates voting their conscience. Where did the 11 cases come from 10 to 11? Well, Alaska was at it, I think. Yeah, Alaska was at it. Sorry? Yes, uh, about, what, two hours ago or an hour and a half ago, there was some other, yes. Well, they, they went to somebody who represented the uh, convention secretary who we hopefully actually gets to the convention secretary. So... I wasn't down there. Some of these other individuals were, but there were some. Other. What's your actual formal name in the organization now? Would you look up online? My name is Dane Waters, D A N E W A T R S. I'm co founder of Delegates Unbound. Any other questions? When will the roll call be? Um, anywhere between in the next couple of hours. Thank you. 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 We understand that some of the, the Trump representatives are now going through. Some of your peers are under that. Well, listen, these delegates, I mean, I mean, what's lost a lot of this is who these delegates are. These delegates are very good people. Yeah. 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 Well, there you have it, an uncomfortably close periscope for about a solid 20 minutes. I hope you guys enjoyed the uh, uh, very uncomfortable eye contact that uh, Dane Waters, the head of Delegates Unbound, was making with you, describing what could be a historic day if what they want is carried through. Uh, again, to recap, what I have in my hand right now is a copy of what he just showed on camera. It represents uh, an as of yet incomplete list of what was uh, officially delivered to a representative or what is thought to have been delivered to an official uh, person uh, rep uh, representing the secretary of the convention. Now there becomes a roll call. Should the roll call uh, be successful, we are officially in uncharted territories. There has never been something like this that has been on the books to happen, and it will happen tonight. We'll cover it on BitTorrent Live. That is at 5 o'clock Pacific time. I will be your host. See you there.